Welcome to another video on the new features of the S2M Center version 6.0. Now there have been a whole lot of great new features added in version 6, so let's go ahead and dive right in to check them out. The first thing I want to go over is the automatic MITRE machining options that have been added to version 6. To do this we need to open the S2M Center's preferences, so let's go ahead and click on the application button, then select the preferences command button. This brought up the preferences dialog. The preferences are separated into tabs. The tab that we need is the CNC tab. Here we find the new MITRE options group. We now have the ability to tell the S2M Center that we want to automatically make MITRE operations where a MITRE can be placed. When MITRE operations are created we can specify that the S2M Center should use a VBIT tool if we have one in our catalog and if the angle of the VBIT is equal to the angle of the MITRE. We can also specify that 4 and 5 axis machines should use a specific tool to create the miters. This list here contains all of the 5 axis tools that are available in my tool catalog. Next up we have a new miter option for DXF imports. So let's click on the import DXF command button in the tools ribbon group to see this new feature. Now to find this new feature we need to click on the edit DXF layer scheme button to bring up our, well, layer scheme. Okay, now we can see the new edge miter item here. This allows us to specify what layer will hold edge miters in the DXF file. We just need to enter the name of the layer that the miters will be found on here and the S2M Center will be able to automatically assign the miters as it finds them. Another great enhancement is a new option in the DXF output of parts. Let's open the machine catalog to take a look at this. Now that we have a machine that is exporting to DXF files, we can click on the Setup tab to find this new feature, which is right here. It's Use Thick on Rect Side Bore for Z Position. What this means is that when a side boring operation is created for the DXF output, you can now specify that the Z position of the operation should be translated into the thickness of the rectangle that is generated for that operation. The next feature is in the Part Editor. As such, I've loaded a list of parts into the S2M Center. Now let's select one to work with. I'll pick the finished right end, so I just need to right click on it and select Edit. Now we can see that I have a new edge banding button. When I click on it, I'm allowed to edit the banding of the part as it can be edited in Cabinet Vision. Another feature that was added to the Part Editor can be found in the Operations Editor. So let's exit out of here by clicking on the Return button, then we can just click on the Edit Operations button. You can see that we have a new operation type here, the Clamex operation. When we select this tool, we just need to place the operation where we want it to go. And just like other operations, we have the properties that allow us to define more information about this operation, like position, in this case operation type, tool type, and a custom description for us to enter. Next up, we now have the ability to import a custom cut list into the S2M Center. To do this, we just need to click on the Import Cut List button in the Tools ribbon group. This brought up an open file dialog that we can use to find the text file that holds our cut list. I've prepared one for us to use in this example. Once we've opened the text file, we have to configure the data fields to work with the import file. I'm not going to go into great detail about this. I will point out, however, that the field definition information is contained in the header fields here. Just click on the little arrow to define what the column is supposed to be. Either ignore it, or specify a data type. As you can see, I have saved this type so I don't have to set this up again. So when we click on the OK button, we can see that all the parts that were listed have been imported with the information that was given. We can now output this to our machinery at any time. Next up I want to show off the new report center contained in the S2M Center. For that, I have optimized a job that we can use to test with. From here, all we need to do is click on the report button, and the new report center will load up. The first thing I want to show you is the new print options, so I will click on the print button to bring up that dialog. This dialog is split up into several groups. The print target is what we will print to. We can choose the printer, which will affect the margins and such of the report. It also has the printer options that you can use. The options group allows you to specify what is considered the first page, how many copies we can print, as well as what pages will be printed. 
Just for a bit of information, the print range here allows us to define a custom list of pages. As the example shows, we can specify a comma delimited list, as well as a small range, like 3 to 4, to get what we need. Next up, I want to show you the export options. If I close the print dialog, then click on the export report button, you can see that it brought up pretty much the same dialog. There is one difference, however. If I select the Direct To option, we can see a huge list of different output types that we can export to. Now let me go ahead and close this out so that I can go over the UI changes to the Report Center as well. The most prominent change is the split of the Report Preview window. On the left, there is now a preview area that allows you to easily move between pages of reports. The report is contained here on the right. Something that you may not have noticed is that the sidebar matches the sidebar in Cabinet Vision's Report Center. This gives you the ability to create report groups as well as the ability to print them all at once. To edit these groups, we will just click on the Setup Reports button. In this area of the Report Center, we can take any of the existing system reports, which are denoted by the S2M symbol next to it, and create any number of user reports from them, which are denoted by the user icon next to it. As an example, I will create a new label report from the 4013 Part Labels report. When we select the report, I can right-click on it and select Edit. I can also click the Copy button and create a copy if I wanted. Now, since this is a system report, the S2M Center tells me that I cannot edit this report. To edit this, I will have to create a new report. The S2M Center will automatically attempt to create a new report once I click OK. I can now rename my report to whatever I want it to be and click OK to bring up the report editor. From here, I can make any changes to the report that I need. The actual editing of the report is outside of the scope of this video, so please take the time to read your help files to learn how to edit reports. Once our editing is complete, we can just save our changes and close the editor. You can now see that I have a new report here at the bottom of the list. It has a user icon next to it, so I have more control over what I can do with it. To show that, if I select the original report we used to create this report and right-click on it, you can see that I can't delete it. We also know that I can't edit it either. But if I go to our report that we created and right-click on that one, you can see that I can, in fact, delete this report. So I'll go ahead and do that now. The final feature that I'd like to cover is the new Flex Store output. Now, after you output your parts to your CNC machines, you can go to the Utilities Ribbon Bar tab, then click on the Offcut Manager Command button. Once the Offcut Manager is displayed, you can see the new ability to sync with a Flex Store database. You just need to check the Sync with Flex Store option, then click the Sync Now, and any offcuts will be synced with Flex Store. And now I would like to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the new features of the S2M Center. If you would like more information on the S2M Center, please visit our website at www.screentomachine.com.